Good. Well, welcome, Alan. How are you today? Very good, thank you. I'm just going to read your bio because it's phenomenal. Alan is known as Celebrity Profiler and Australia's leading personality and business profiler. He's been featured on national television, profiling the likes of our leading politicians, TV and sports stars, as well as Britain's royalty. He works with businesses to help them grow and maximize their profits through advanced personality and character assessments, utilizing inter interdependent visual profiling. He's got international clients of, like Disney Films and Gillette, and with a number of profiles running into the thousands, Alan's services are unique and unrivaled in the field of reading people. Alan, that's phenomenal. You can do what very few people can do. Well, actually, what I do, everybody can do, but most people have forgotten how to do it. Yes. Yep. Because as young children, we're very good at picking other people. Yep. So we need that as part of our survival. Now, once we get older, we get involved in everything else in our lives, and we therefore forget about that. You know, mm. we're busy looking at, you know, chasing you know, uh, relationships, sports, getting, you know, learning and growing at school. And so the ability to read people just gets put aside. And like any muscle, you don't work it, it atrophies. So really what I am is just a personal trainer who comes along and helps people to understand what they originally knew, but also remove the biases of what they've picked up in between time. Because mm, it's amazing because yeah. kids can ha have an intuitive sense about people, don't they? They can sort of well, say, I don't right. like that person or I like, you know. Mm. Yeah. Well, if you think about you go back to tribal times, we didn't have speech. We communicated mm. by being, looking at somebody. Our expressions told them everything about us mm. as far as our moods and emotions. Yeah. And our facial features uh, gave, away, uh, gave away a lot about it as well. If we look at an actor in a yes. movie, for instance, mm. we just look at them and go, well, do they look like they feel the part or not? And we use the term. They just don't look the part. Yes. So we all do it, but the trouble is that we... Uh, I get it confused with everything else. So I've had somebody who's done the wrong thing by us in the past. We see somebody that looks like them. Mm. Naturally enough, we then respond to them that same way. Mm. And because they pick that up, uh, we don't trust them. They pick up, but we don't trust them. They pull away. We create a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's you know, right. That person yeah. would be somebody who um, really yeah, is a great person, just that they look like the other person. Is just you know, just a matter of fact. That's right. We truly. Uh shape our reality and um, I had friends give me a quote years ago he said wherever you go there you are and, <laughs> and, and it's it's so true we, we really carry our inner reality out into the external world and people respond to us how we how we perceive people are or how we perceive reality so that's so well, it's well yes. known that our neurology and our physiology are linked so whatever we're feeling will come out in our body mm. in our the way we stand and everything else our expressions if we have an injury that will then go back the other way, then now we have that, that emotion around that as well. Yes. So whatever we're feeling on the inside is showing on the outside. Mm. People pick that up. And I think um, someone like Louise Hay said that our face is really a roadmap. It's, it's, it's a roadmap of our habitual emotional uh, states. Mm. And if we, can, yeah. we can read a lot from just our face, you know, whether it yeah. be wrinkles or um, just this, how it's just a habitual way of looking at uh, yeah. well, the thing to, to think about is that, well, if you look at somebody who's been working out, you can tell they're fit by the shape of their muscles. Mm. Uh, bodybuilders, they lift weights in different ways to get different uh, cuts and shapes in their muscles as well. Mm. So if you work a muscle over and over again, it's going to develop ridges, crevices, reshape, etc. Same thing with your face. As I said before, if what we're feeling on the inside is shown on the outside. So if you're concentrating on a document, really getting into it, then you're going to pull these muscles in. You're mm -hmm. going to tighten them up here. You'll put crevices and ridges and around the place. That's what I'm reading. You move a muscle over and over again, it's going to de develop these uh, little uh, lines that come down here. You'll develop the ridges here. That'll tell yes. me that somebody's really focusing on the detail. Things got to be exact. Yes. And that's what I'm reading. So as they say, the... Uh, the eyes are the windows to the soul, or well, your facial features are the windows to your mind, how they, you like to think and process. So I, I noticed one of your testimonies, uh, Alan, you had uh, someone who had said that they had depression and you were able to help them. Tell us a bit more about that. Well, this particular gentleman uh, was an uh, investigator on the railway, so he saw a lot of carnage. Mm. And over the time of trying to get changes and not being able to instigate the changes, of course he ended up with PTSD. Yes. So he had a couple of years with uh, both um, uh, well, two uh, psychologists 
and then he had drug therapy. And he speaks about all this in the uh, the video yes. that he uh, did the testimonial in. And he said how he couldn't really connect on that. And so when he was allowed to come to me, I said, well, look, it's no use focusing on your problem because you've spent two years with that. It's only confused you. So outside of that, where's an issue that you have? What's something you'd like to work on? He said, well, I can't really connect with other people. I can't read them. I said, well, reading them is important. And he said, yes. Mm -hmm. So I said, how about I teach you how to read other people? So as we started to read other people, while he was learning about their traits, he couldn't help but learn about his own. Mm. He also then, because of the way I teach and talk about the traits, he realised there is no right or wrong trait, and every trait has an upside and a downside. So people who are aesthetic appreciation, who feel things and keep it inside, they look like they're laid back all the time. But mm. down underneath, it can build up like a pressure cooker, mm. but there's no release valve. There's a final explosion as the lid comes off, big outburst, it goes back on and they're, they're relaxed again. Yes. So the upside of that is they feel things, they really connect with it, they um, don't appear to be uh, agitated or anything, they're easy to be around. The downside is it, of it is they can explode and also have depression. So there's no right or wrong trait. But if you know your traits, you can set your environment up so that you can control the downside of your traits and have more enjoyment with the upside. So with this gentleman, he learned to read other people within a couple of weeks he then understood everything that was going on with the previous two years. And the rest of the uh, course where he learned the, all the traits and everything, uh, he then uh, worked with better relationships with his ex-wife, his kids, you know, all these uh, people who had been estranged from him because of the pressures, uh, now he was having better connections with. All because he was able to understand other people's traits but also his own traits. That's absolutely brilliant, Alan. And I know you've worked with royalty. I thought that might be interesting to talk about. Are you allowed to talk about it as a confidential? Or? Well, not so much working with the royalty, but where it came about was um, different media groups asking me to profile things that were happening in the media. Yes. Okay. So, originally I had a phone call from uh, Channel 7's uh, Daily Edition asking if I'd first of all seen Julie Bishop's eye roll in Parliament. Okay. And I went, no, I hadn't, but they mm. sent me a quick link. While they were on the phone with me, I told them what I could see. I then got asked to go on the station that afternoon to be recorded. And while we're on air, they said, oh, can you please have a look at this one as well? It's Kate Middleton. Okay. Similar thing, I rolled while she was in London. Mm. Oh, sorry, no, in, um, in uh, New, New York at a charity event. Somebody walked past her, said something, she gave this eye roll. But the context, so I explained the difference in the context that was in uh, uh, Julie Bishop's uh, situation and also then in Kate Middleton's situation how the expression might have been a similar one, but how the situations around were different, therefore the meaning was completely different. Yes. So we talked about how things are seen in context and in the, uh, the situation at the time. That's right. And I've been reading that polygraph test where they, they try and they're, they're, they're not 100% ac accurate because a person can seem like they're lying, but it, they may just have heightened emotions because they, wanna, they, they don't want to <laughs> appear that they're lying. And, and that creates the emotions that makes people think they're lying. So... Uh, it has to be right. read in context, and sometimes there's yeah. micro expressions and and stuff which people can do, which yeah. you know, which can be read in different ways, and and they're not necessarily clues that a person is lying. They may just be, mm. just be really sincere, or, or whatever That's it is. It. Yeah. Well, see, with the polygraph test for a starter, they're based on your physiology. Mm. So if you have a fear that you're going to be misjudged, yes, you're going to give away false positives. Mm. If you're somebody who believes you can't be taught. You know, psychopath, for instance, mm. they're going to come up with false negatives because there's no physiological change. Yes. So, you know, when you're reading micro expressions in that situation, instead of using a machine, you would just say to the person, look, I'm not able to read your expression. So, and they're uncontrollable. Micro expression happens the moment somebody says something or a situation happens, you react unconsciously, then the conscious mind steps in and shuts it off. Mm. So that's quick little moment, it could be as fast as a fifth of a second down to one twenty-fifth of a second. Yes. And in that moment, you're giving away the expression. So it depends on what the expression was in context of what was said at the time. Mm -hmm. So you'd say to um, somebody who's always worried about being misjudged, look, I can read the expressions, this is the, uh, uh, the efficiency at which I read them, I'm going to know if you're telling a lie and I'm going to know if you're telling the truth, so just relax. That person relaxed relaxes and they don't give anything away then because they're not lying. The person who uh, thinks they can't be caught, if you 
pretty set of where they start to doubt themselves, mm. they'll start to give away information the moment you start asking questions. And the way you ask questions, you know, you space it so that you're looking at the bigger picture first of all and you're breaking it down, you're looking for the gaps and finally get to the closed questions, the yes or no answers where you know the answer and that's when you're really looking for those expressions. And yeah, I read a book, um, I think it was about, by, uh, about CIA and how they, agents, how they trained one of the top interrogators to insert a mind virus which gets people, you know, mm. and then they start revealing and then it sort of works in tandem with what you do. So I can see what you do would benefit uh, law enforcement, military, FBI, CIA, Australian security, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, you do, um, you just went to London and I just would like to talk about that because that sounds like it was something pretty awesome and it's a tremendous reward and recognition for all your work that you've put in that they con contacted you and I'd love to hear about that. that and our viewers would love to hear about that, I'm sure. Excellent. Well, it was, um, I was hired by Disney uh, Films and uh, Gillette mm. to go to London to Pinewood Studios for their uh, Star Wars Rogue One launch because we've got the movie coming out, I think here in Australia, it's about the 18th of December. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, Gillette, they have their new razor called Rogue One. Mm. So they mm. invited me over as the uh, uh, guest speaker to talk about how the face tells a uh, story long before you actually uh, open your mouth to say a word. So it was all about that side of it. So mm. they asked me to speak to the media and they flew in um, oh, somewhere about 120 uh, journalists from around the world, which was a lot of fun because they come over and we start talking about the face and it's much easier just to profile people while you're talking to them. And they were lining up, so for the next 20 minutes, they were in a line behind each other. That's so why I found out, I said, well, how long have some of you been waiting? They said, 20 minutes. So they're coming through, and that went on for about three hours. Wow. Uh, and with that, uh, that's um, uh, been a great recognition because, as they uh, pointed out, they billed me as the leading authority on reading faces. Mm -hmm. So great uh, acknowledgement of the work I've been doing, which the main reason, by the way, that I've really followed the celebrity profile is not so much for my recognition, but it's recognition for what I do because especially the facial features would have such a great power of understanding someone's personality and therefore being able to connect with them more effectively mm. is something that hasn't been very well accepted. Mm. But the more that I'm working in that field as a celebrity profiler, the more they're looking at it, which means that eventually we'll have it in school so the teachers will have the, uh, the skills so the kids don't uh, fall through the cracks. Uh, next week I have a meeting with the education department with the head psychologist for New South Wales to uh, talk about how uh, this can be used in education. Because the teachers I've trained before, well you can recognise traits in a newborn child, a certain number that are nature that are passed down from the parents. Yes. As the child gets older, more of those traits develop, but there's also the traits that we call nurture, which are our response to our environment. So we go from having, say, 10 traits that I can see at the early age to 68 traits, the traits when we get into our uh, 20s. So by the time a child is ready to pick their final subjects at school, there's about 60 traits. So we can give them ideas on what careers will suit their personalities. So they don't spend the next 40 years trying to find a career they like and wasting a lot of money on university degrees that they're never going to use. And at the front end, the teacher can look at the child, understand their personality style, and understand how they need to be taught, uh, taught so that they don't fall through the cracks. They're not labelled with uh, all these different conditions, which some kids fit into, yes, but nowhere near the number that we're, we're putting on drugs. Mm. And as soon as you put them on drugs, you stifle their future. We really ruin them so that they fit the system. We need to start changing the system so that these kids uh, grow up to become uh, functional and happy adults so that their children then do the same thing. There's definitely a great need um, on that, Alan. So, so uh, yeah, I really, so that's really what do probably hope inspires me more than anything else is the education side. Yeah, and I'm a believer. You know, personally, I just, I sort of think, uh, you know, kids go go through, and this hasn't changed for 20 years. Robert Kiyosaki said, 20 years on, kids mm. still graduate with no understanding of what a mortgage is, what a credit card is, what interest rate is, basic financial knowledge. And but getting back to what you say. Definitely, if, if teachers can read students better, it saves them from pigeonholing them or just labelling them as as dysfunctional and sociopathic and and and, yeah. why, and you know you yeah. might gear that kid who's more kinesthetic, like you said, to a more hands-on career. And mm. you know that would be great for guidance counsellors and stuff. And I really do hope you get through on that, Alan. Yeah. Well, I'm actually doing some work in uh, December with a group of veterans up in Brisbane. Mm. These are um, you know ex-soldiers, military, etc., who 
come back to civilian life and go, well, where do we go to next? What do we do? How do we come back from a war zone yes. and fit back into society? At the same time, we have in Australia about 3,500 students every year who are expelled. Yeah. So what we're there actually doing is they're bringing the children in, and these are kids that have no respect for anybody, their parents, authorities, teachers, police. But when they're put together with a vet and they have their camps, that completely changes their attitudes because they understand. So you're actually meeting the kids at their level. So with that, um, I'm happily yeah, that I'm being invited up to uh, train the vets so they can connect with the kids more at a faster rate, be able to read them more effectively. Because so I've uh, put a couple of mobile apps together and two of those apps, uh, there's a school in America who looked wow. at using them to teach the kids how to read. Now you might ask, well, how do you use a profiling app to teach someone how to read? But if uh, these kids, year 12 students, reading at their elementary school, which is our primary school, uh, Latino background, so English is not their first language, yeah. and they wouldn't read anything she put in front of them or couldn't read it. So she read some articles by Paul Ekman, who was a gentleman who did the, the psychologist who did all the research on the micro expressions, mm. and they got excited. They wanted to know more. She found me on the web, said, you know, realized that my stuff was very simple to uh, follow because that's the way I explain it. Mm. And she said, What can we do? And I said, Well, if they want to read uh, each other. Use that because if kids won't uh, learn the way you teach, then teach the way they learn. They want to learn this, so therefore use the apps. They can read the, um, the they have to read the instructions because the app doesn't do it for them. It wasn't designed for something that your predator could take down the pub on a Friday night and start snapping girls and get uh, pickup lines from it. But you actually uh, read the uh, profile or the, uh, the instructions. They then do the profile, then they get a report. How do you know it's in the report? You've got to read the report. Uh -huh. And one of the apps, you profile yourself and the other person that tells you how to talk to them. So uh -huh. now how do you know that works? You've got to sit down with the other kid, talk to them. So now they're working on improved communications and anti-bullying because it's hard to bully someone you've got to know. Mm -hmm. So that's all from these uh, two apps. And uh, then you look at seven traits, but it's a, it's a nice introduction to it. So that's another thing I'd like to get into education where the children start to uh, learn how to read each other, but it's not to manipulate, it's to understand the other person so you can have a stronger relationship. Outstanding. Gosh, <laughs> you're doing a lot, Alan, and you're really shaping the future of, uh, of generations of Australians and people in, mm. you know, around the world. So, so what, what do you do? You do workshops, one-to-one -one I do one-on-one -on -one training, corporate trainings, workshops, looking at doing more online courses, developing programs along with, well, one of my students is a, um, psych, uh, a counsellor. Yes. Uh, he's just done a testimonial recently in that where he also had a gentleman who had been seen psychologist, no results, had one session with him, everything solved. Wow. Because what he realised was that nobody was in this guy's personality. His work had sent them to, uh, to the health professionals to be sorted out because he's had stress and everything else. Uh, Aaron, his, as the uh, counsellor's name, he looked at him, he said, well, I'll put my other hat on, the face reading hat, and when he profiled him, he realised that his traits uh, were the style of somebody who builds their comps, has to do things over and over, very focused on what they do, very much, don't forget about, forget about multitasking, it has to be structured, finish that one, move on to the next. Mm. So he's, you know, he said to the guy, well, this is what I'm seeing, how does that fit? And he goes, yes, he said, what have they got you doing at work? Oh, well, my job has changed, the new role is this completely outside of his personality. It was stressing him out. That's where he was getting his problems from. Yes. So the information went back to the employers. This is what you need to do. You know, he's a good employee. Just give him the right task to do. They change the uh, job role, end the problem. Mm, brilliant. That's what you need to know is if you know the personality, you know the person, how the way they process, uh, and the way you go. Absolutely. Make life easier for everybody. So the employers, employers now got a, an active, productive staff member as opposed to the one that they were starting to create who was lost and depressed. Outstanding. Well, I, I know I, I look forward to doing one of your courses one day, and I, I think there's tremendous value there. And we, I know I could ask you any number of questions, but I hope that what we've given today, our viewers, is just a small dose of, of Alan Stevens that they can find out more. So how do they find out more about you, Alan? The best way is to go to my website, which is alanstevens.com.au, yes. Alan with one L, A-L-A-N, and Stevens, S-T-E-V-E-N-S.com.au. Um, always happy to connect with people. Um, there's also my Facebook page, so it's the same website. Put a slash behind it, 
and put the word Facebook, that'll take you directly to my Facebook page as well. Yes. And uh, get you a conversation there. I have both a business page where people can join in conversations, ask questions. So the more people understand about this stuff, the um, uh, the better it is because, and therefore, I'm always open to having a chat with people. So if you're in the in teaching, if you're in employment, well, actually, even in the dating sites now, wow. we're making it safer as well. So how to be able to look at a profile and know where that person is, who they've said they are. Are they a predator or not? And if they are a keeper, how do you keep them? Wow. Outstanding, Alan. Well, I do wish you the best, and I know you, your star is just going to shine even brighter uh, in the future ahead. And I really commend you for what you're doing, your mission to help Australians and, and people around the world and change things. That That's phenomenal. So um, fantastic. Thank you so much, Alan. And also, well, we've got a little gift to give. Um, we've got a little competition, haven't we? Did you mention something about that for our viewers? Oh, yeah. What was that again? <laughs> Hold on. I think we we're going to do. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, yep. Yeah, um, we're going to have a. We're going to have a competition. I'll work out a way to do it. But you're going to give away a free personality profile, which is valued at how much? Yeah. How much do you value that at? Uh, the value of that is $264. Okay, we're going to give away one of those free, and uh, I'll be talking with you about how we're going to do that, and, 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 and we'll promote it really nicely. So thank you so much, Alan. Thank you for your time, and this is Roger from The Roger Show. Thank you. I really do appreciate your time, and uh, wow, thank one of the best interviews you. ever. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.